Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this unboxing video on Battle Bunnies. Uh, my name is Killer Red, uh, so I've got the privilege of unboxing this new product. Uh, as you can see, it's a Warhammer Horus Heresy kit, Land Raider Proteus. Um, should be on pre order today um, if you haven't already seen it, please check it out. This was provided to Battle, Battle Bunnies by Games Workshop uh, for the purpose of this review. As we can see, it's presented in the very nice black colour scheme packaging that's now commonplace on the Horus Heresy range. Um, painted in pale fists, as we see, um, with them being one of the two armies also featured in the core box, which makes sense. Um, if we turn the box over, so lots of information on the back cover. Um, we've got uh, the assault ramp. Uh, Version. Uh, as you can see, this this kit will build two versions of the, of the Land Raider Proteus. So we've got the traditional front assault ramp, uh, or we've got the front uh, explorator, I believe it is, uh, in the rules. Um, if you've seen the Spartan kit before, you'll know why well, you be familiar with the weapon loadouts. But this time around, we've got the Gravis Last Cannon sponsors, not the. Uh, Sort of quad last cannons you see on the Spartan. Um, but if you've seen the Spartan, you'll be familiar with the weapon loadouts on the twin linked hull mounted uh, front weapon, uh, heavy bolter, last cannon, and heavy flamer, of course, as shown here. Um, we've got some suggested colours if you're using GW paints. Uh, we've also got the alternate colour scheme for the Sons of Horus, uh, which makes sense. Um, and of course, the vehicle transfer sheet. Let's open the box and see what's inside. First off, uh, like a lot of the new box products, uh, the, the kit comes in its own uh, internal tray, which is really nice, keeps everything tidy and contained. Uh, means if you're opening it in the car on the way back from the shop, uh, things don't spill out onto the, onto the footwell or all over the place. It's really nice, matte black finish. Um, obviously we've got the sprues here, um, some of these will be very familiar, so like a lot of the vehicles before, the Rhino and the Kratos for example, we've got the, um, what do you call it, tank accessory sprue, so um, various uh, pintle mounted weapons, various hatches, uh, crew options if you want uh, exposed crew members on top, um, obviously there's a dozer blade if you're building a Rhino or something smaller than a Proteus. <laughs> So that's quite nice. Um, this is obviously a sprue that we've seen before with the Spartan kit. Um, like a lot of eagle-eyed people saw before, it has various options on here for different weapon loadouts. Um, obviously today the instructions will be telling us which components to use to build the proteins. Put that to one side. Here we've got the main track sections, we've got the front hull weapon, we've got the base of the hull, the rear um, power plant exhausts. Uh, again, something very familiar to anyone who's built uh, the Spartan kit. After that, we now have turn it over. So this is a very, this sprue is unique to this kit I believe. Um, so we've got the side access points, we've got the sponsor mounts, uh, the Land Raider, Land Raider Proteus um, dozer blade, front assault ramp, various top hull sections, side hulls, that's the front hull where the weapon mount goes, um, that's where the uh, dozer blade attaches. Sponson Cowdings, I guess. What you call them that? And then the final sprue in the box is the tracks, uh, the track holes, I suppose, the side holes, I suppose you would say. Um, again, very, very familiar to anyone who's built a Spartan before. Uh, generic side doors with optional iconography for various legions, being Sons of Horus, and generic and or Fists, so various different eye horses here. Uh, crew member arms, uh, 
various accessories if you want to use it on the uh, accessory sprue. Then at the bottom of the box we've got the familiar tank transfer sheet. Again, Sons of Horace and Pure Fists. Also some generic numbering if you want to use them for vehicle markings rather than legion markings. And then the instruction sheet. Let's take a look at the instructions. So, um, obviously this is a kit we're building today, some nice artwork, which I believe is very similar to the, the front of the box. Um, so it starts off building the side holes. So, um, left and right sections for the track units. Um, two, sprues be, two, two sprues being used here. Sprue B and Sprue D. Um, so then previously, pretty straightforward to be honest. Very clear, very, very straightforward instruction. Then once you've got the track sections, you can go into and actually attach the track plating. Um, straightforward, left and right. Um, the next page deals with the rear engine or reactor uh, with the twin exhausts. As you can see here, pretty straightforward, very clear to follow. If you've not built one of these before, it's, uh, there's no, no, uh, no confusion here. It's pretty step by step. Now, if you're familiar with the um, Astartes rules or the her Heretic rules, whichever Libra book you've purchased. You'll know there's a unit profile for the Land Raider Proteus, but it, could, it has two versions. So you have the Proteus Carrier, so greater troop capacity, uh, main difference being front assault ramp. Um, uh, here we've got it with the front weapons as well. Um, the second variant is the Explorator, uh, as you can see. Um, and it's really nice to see that you can build it with or without the front weapons. So that's quite nice. If you're familiar with the resin tanks previously from Forge World, you'll know this is the armored Proteus uh, because of this front weapon mount. Um, you can have a look at one of them afterwards. Um, a key difference here is also the dozer blade on the front of the tank. Um, so if you choose to build the carrier version, Obviously, it has a special rule assault vehicle. So, everyone wants a good assault ramp, charging terminators out for, forward into your enemy. So, here we have a little sub assembly that deals with the assault ramp. Um, very straightforward. You can see it attaching to the engine block, which was done on the previous page. And you're finished with a center section of the tank. Um, and then you would attach it to the track units built previously. Um, here you can see the three version, uh, three versions of the weapon mounts. So heavy bolter, last cannon, and heavy flamer. Of course, twin linked in the rules. Um, you could probably build this and keep it unglued for painting, or even you can put it in and lift it out if you desire. These are quite easy, straight, straightforward to magnetize if you want to do that. As we go over the page, we've got the alternate version of Proteus, as we saw earlier. So the Explorator, so the main difference being the front the front section, so no assault ramp this time. But it attaches to the base unit and the rear engine section in the same manner. Again, building the center piece, and then stick on the track section. Dozer blade, as we see here. And key difference is, it's important to note this is a dozer blade from the Proteus, not on the tank accessory sprue, because that Tank accessory spur is the one for the Rhino chassis, so it won't fit. <laughs> um, the further steps break it down if you want to add the front weapons, like we saw previously. Uh, but it's largely the same. Here we now deal with building the sponsons. Um, 
they come in multiple components so you've got the sponsor mount itself that you build left or right and then you've got the the uh, grabber's last cannons which attach and then the front the uh, top and bottom pegs the sensor mount and the uh, energy coil fixings as you can see here uh, again pretty straightforward just make sure you build one left and one right <laughs> don't build uh, two of the same side uh, really like the new plastic kits where the sponsons can twist on uh, it means you don't have to glue them on if you don't want to uh, makes, you can paint them in sub-assemblies you can swap them out to different vehicles if you want to um, it gives you a bit, a bit of flexibility I definitely recommend not gluing them for transport you don't want to snap off your sponsons transporting to your next game uh, which is a bit more practical the sponsons can, can be carried safely with it your figure case with your infantry to be honest. Now with the page again we've got lots of the top hatch weapon mounts whether it's uh, pinto weapons, whether it's combi bolters, combi melters, combi volkite etc. There's a whole raft of options seen here. Um, if you built one of the new plastic tanks like the Rhino or the Sakaran, you have seen these before but you're more than familiar with them. It's a very popular Havoc launcher option here. Uh, here you see the top exposed crew member. If you want to build him, I think he's in Mark II, um, you can stick him on top. You don't have to glue him in. Uh, you, either for painting or again transport, you can leave him unglued and just lift him in and out if you want to. Um, various options for pintle weapons, um, all the different points values in the rules. Depends what you're uh, telling your tank to do. You know, do you want heavy flamers because you're driving straight forward, assaulting your enemy, or do you want to drop off its troops and then go charge around the battlefields using melted guns, etc., to take out uh, light infantry, light tanks, or something else? Over the page, more hatch options, a straightforward closed option. <laughs> We've got hunting club missiles, smoke launchers. So smoke launchers, I think you get as default in the rules where searchlights an upgrade. I think it's five point upgrade. So if you want to add that on, this tells you how to build it. Here we see the optional iconography and uh, where, well, suggested locations to put on the tank. Um, obviously, very very optional. Uh, even the weapon locations, you can choose where they go. If you've got a few tanks, might want to change it up. Who knows? And on the back, there we go. Uh, we see everything assembled. So three versions with all the various weapon loadouts, as we see here. Uh, so we've got the Proteus with this the front assault ramp. We've got the Proteus Explorator. Um, and then we've got Pro Proteus Explorator with the dose supply. Really like the new instructions. Really clear. The images are perfect. You know, there's no um, no confusion. Um, very nice. Now I'm going to take a minute or two to go through the construction, um, as per the instructions that we talked about previously. Um, I'll also explore the two alternate builds. Um, see what you think.
Just one thing to note, uh, not to worry anyone, <laughs> I'm actually uh, cleaning mold lines off, off camera. Um, so I didn't want to make you sit through me what uh, cleaning mold lines. So now we're on the next stage of the instructions, so we've got the tracks to attach. So I arranged them per, per track unit, obviously we built these earlier, um, so we'll be attaching them now. So, like we saw earlier, um, there's two versions, well, a subversion. Uh, I'm because I've already got two explorators. Uh, I'm choosing to build the Protus carrier. So these are the components here. Uh, these slot into uh, this top piece. These are the sides, front assault ramp, uh, top door on the assault ramp, and then this is the base unit. Even though I'm gluing the doors closed, I've assembled them unglued at the moment. The only piece you have to glue is this top piece, which is like a top reverse hinge where it meets this. Um, I'm attaching it to the base plate just while it's drying, so it holds its shape. Obviously I haven't put in this yet. While well, it's drying. Do these inserts. So this is obviously the top hole for the front hole. Uh, so, whilst these various pieces are drying, I'm just going to attach the base plate to the rear engine block. This is a symbol of 45 degree joint. Everything slots together really nicely. There's various grooves and tongues, as you can see. Press everything together. I'm only doing one side at the moment. You 
want just line everything up. Oh, it's just this isn't how you do this Just give you an idea. So you may have noticed that I've gone a bit out of sequence, going to instructions, that's because I was seeing what it would be like to build both front and front options for the exporter and the carrier and see how they would fit together. If you could magnetize them or just swap them out. But I'm deciding to stay with the carrier. As you can see. It's quite nicely. Now I'm just going to put on the uh, other side. Sure, it sits flat. <laughs> no sparkling wobble or animated wobble. As you can see here, not many components for this front hull weapon. Uh, weapon mounting, weapon top plate. Uh, in this case, I've chosen to go for the, the very popular uh, last cannon. Uh, in case you're wondering, I've left the exhaust uh, unattached at the moment. No, that's for uh, painting sub assembly. Uh, this will be Thousand Suns when it's finished. So I'll be doing the uh, candy red all over, but using various stages of masking, masking the tracks, masking the vents. These will be painted separately, then attached because it's just easier. Uh, left side doors off as well. Sponsons yet to be built. Uh, but we'll cover that as we go through. Later, when I'm finished, I'll go in there. We'll see these all attached into here, and I'll go inside. I may leave it off uh, for painting sub assembly. Uh, on the Spartan, I've magnetized these into this. Uh, I probably won't do it in this case. Um, but yeah, straightforward build so far. I need to do a top hatch as well. So I'm just assembling things in a few different sub-assemblies. Um, painting really. The doors all get various decals on them from the uh, transfer sheet. Uh, these are things we'll slot in afterwards, but because I don't want these candy red, this will be black for instance. Uh, a lot of these will be uh, metal, uh, silver metal. Um, so the I don't want to spray them candy red and then spray silver on the top. It just thickens the, thickens the paint and loses detail. So these will be sub assemblies attaching afterwards. Make sure to include this. Uh, so this goes on the front piece. Just in the corner there. Uh, looking at the sponsor and sprue, it's important to note because this is also used for the Spartan. Uh, these bottom pieces, these ones here, there's two versions, uh, one power cable, two. Obviously the two power cables used for Spartan, so make sure you're picking the right one as per the instruction. Also be aware, these pieces for the sponsor and housing, I guess you call it, are very different. Obviously this one's larger or longer to accommodate the four last cannons on the Spartan sponsons. So make sure you go for the shorter ones. Uh, number 10. Uh, power cables are also different. So again, make sure you're following the various instructions.
kit's finished, but for comparison, this is the resin Land Raider Proteus. Um, this one's been modified, so it has the Volkite Sponsons and the, uh, the can at the front, but it's the same hull, so I thought I'd like to see comparisons. Lengthwise, it's about the same. The plastic one's a lot of squatter. to see on camera but you can see the sponsons are slightly moved around if you like the track the sponsons are slightly moved around the, the main door is moved around let's get rid of that back sections uh, section sorry is almost identical tracks are the same width as you can see the center hull is the same width Lines up pretty well. It's just because this one's a bit taller, uh, these are being moved around slightly, it looks like. It goes up a bit better. See what I mean? Can't really tell on camera. Um, vents and everything at the top slightly moved around. Relatively the same. Again, this one's modified the front section. So, can't compare that one. 